the dev Twitch stream. <laughs> My name is Nick Taylor. I'm a lead software engineer at Forum. Forum is the software that powers dev. <laughs> Wait, oh no. Oh no. Just gonna <laughs> Okay, Chris Christina's got the giggles. Oh, she had to close the camera. All right, well I'm pretty sure like like the there's a lawnmower that just showed up right at her window, <laughs> right? As she was like trying to do her intro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh oh, thanks. Jamin said it's uh, it's all smooth now. Uh yeah, sorry about that folks. Oh perfect. <laughs> yeah. <right>. Back <laughs> The oh, go by. Sorry. <laughs> no, uh. I'm just cracking about the whole situation. <laughs> Steven Gordon, I'm the open source community manager <laughs> at Forum. And today we're with Gant, who is making me not professional at all. So Gant, <laughs> tell us about yourself. <laughs> so hi, everybody. My name's Gant. Ah, that was just for you, Nick. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> give me a little heart attack. Give me a heart attack. <laughs> Oh, man. My name is Gant Laborde. I'm CIO at Infinite Red. We are the best React Native dev shop in the entire world. Come to us for if you want your iOS, Android, uh, Windows, Mac, web world to actually all run off the same source code. Uh, I am the chief innovation officer, and it means that I get to do cool things uh, along with our CTO, Jamin Holmgren, who's on, in the audience, I've heard. And we get to figure out amazing things about technology, go on cool casts like this, talk about uh, technology at a really high level with really awesome and interesting people. That's that's my analysis of what we do. All right, awesome. Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, just really super pumped to have you back. Uh, had a really great time the last time you were on. And yes, uh, uh, I was yeah. at Magnolia JS last week, and you had a killer presentation there too. So really looking forward to uh, today. Um, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I, I know now. the. the I, I can't streams. promise it's gonna stay like this. <laughs> I'm there. It's the laughing stream. Okay. The laugh stream. I love it. I love yep. it. Yep. Oh, you had a good laugh today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> did you even introduce yourself? To... Yeah, you did. You did. I can tell. Yeah, I did. <laughs> she did it three times because one time we were offline. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, all right. Uh, so let's get to it. Go ahead, Nick. You you talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like you're going to burst into laughter again. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Why don't we get to it, Gant? Um, mm -hmm. I guess I'll let you take uh, the steering wheel and we can go from here. Do you want to sure, man. share your screen? Yeah. 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 So uh, I'll just start off, uh, first of all, with. Um, like, this is super awesome to be back. Last time we chatted here, we talked about a bunch of, if I recall, tons of fun, different technology. Uh, I had, I believe we were, I was just finishing my book then. And so we covered like a little bit of that. We talked about tic-tac-toe, enjoying the show, where we did the oh, facial yeah, yeah. recognition, stuff like that. That was so fun. Um, talked a little bit about Not Safe for Work JS. That was pretty cool. And then I showed y'all, I think, uh, a little bit of the sorting hat, AI sorting hat.com, which was like a project in this book that I had uh, just kind of like, I think this was February or so I was in there. So the book yeah. was coming to an end on all that stuff. Um, I have really, really enjoyed this entire process. And I got to say, this is an amazing feeling. Being able to hold it. Oh, yeah. Take a screenshot. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Right, go. <laughs> um, so it's been a really cool process. Uh, I kind of would love to talk about what's in there a little yeah. bit, and mm -hmm. then we can jump off in all kinds of wild and amazing fun stuff along the way. So yeah, I am going to use a little bit of my Magnolia slides, and that'll help out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. let's talk about what's in there. And I think yeah. it'd also be a little bit cool if if you want to, because I know there's other like developers in here who may consider yeah. writing. If you want to talk about the process a little, like working with O'Reilly. Writing or, process? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that'd be cool, too. So You know what? But let's talk about up... what's in the book. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to pull up something so that way we can talk about that in a minute. So, all right. So sharing my screen, I'll select this screen and then mm -hmm. you should see. Aha. Look, here it ah, is. Behold. Aha. <laughs> And that's that's really what it looks like, a hundred percent, right? Um, you got the turtle. Like... Yes, I did get the turtle. The, the I, animal I, turtles are cool. I, 
it is super cool. I like turtles. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, I have the audio for that. So, so yeah, you'll know this because you have seeing a... what what animal people get. I'm always like, oh. <laughs> here we go. Turtle. I like turtles. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the audio for that. You've got a stream deck, so you'll be doing that more than enough pretty soon. As yeah, well. it's all going to be sound bites. <laughs> Perfect. I, uh, yeah, actually, I couldn't choose anything. I said I wanted a reptile because two of the books that really I, I learned a lot from and I really enjoyed significantly were uh, lizards. I was like, OK, just as I live in New Orleans, give me an alligator. And they were like, yeah. uh, you get a turtle. And so I was like, OK, that's fine. Alligator snapping turtle. Turtles. You're right. This is like a diamond back terrapin or something like that mm. i don't know you've got to check all the cool stuff on that so um so in the book i got to do a lot of fun things and i'd love to these are all things and what i really enjoy about this is like i hate that math class where they're like why do i need to know this and they go oh it's on the test oh yeah ah. yeah like yeah it was insanely fun to just think of fun and creative things to do so some of the stuff that we did i did bring back the tic-tac-toe which okay. we talked mm -hmm. about last time and in the book um i don't have them um actually train the tic-tac-toe i just actually yeah. have them i hand them a fully intelligent tic-tac-toe ai i'm like yeah. here implement that mm -hmm. and that's really fun i think like it's like in chapter four or something where five where it's like here you go take this and then now you can play tic-tac-toe against an ai and then you've like put it in place and you've hooked the javascript up to it so tic-tac-toe came back and it was really kind of a cool process so if you enjoy that kind of thing i enjoy uh seeing ai work that way uh <laughs> this is really fun <laughs> so i came up with this concept i already know i already know <laughs> Well, hold on. You have to. So there's uh, the data from the Titanic. So here's a really cool thing that happens. Um, have you ever been to Vegas's uh, Las Vegas's uh, the Titanic um, Museum? No, but they have some things, not the museum, but they have this huge like Titanic in Orlando. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like a experience type thing. Well, I mean, there's big but... enough. They could have pieces in Orlando as well. But uh, one of the things they do do in this, your ticket comes with um, a name of a person. And mm -hmm. then you kind of like go through and it tells you that person's uh, name. It tells you uh, what their sort of like what class ticket they got. Yeah. First class, second class, third class. Um, and then it tells you like their their gender, the recorded gender and like where the room number is. And so as you're going through, you can kind of pretend to be that person. At the mm -hmm. end, you find out if you lived or you died. <laughs> <laughs> And it's kind of like, like, a weird. like you get to the end of it. <laughs> you're like, okay, I was this person. I am dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, so we have all the data of who lived and who died and what class their cabin was, like what their names were, all this stuff. And there's this problem of like figuring out um, would you have lived or died? You know, so you can actually figure out if your name was this and your ticket was this. And I was like, this is kind of a fun problem with the data solving it. So you could actually yeah. teach an AI to predict accurately based off of all the information we had on each passenger, uh, whether or not they would have lived or died. For instance, mm -hmm. uh, zero reverends survived the Titanic. So if your name has reverend in it, pff, that's gonna hit your score real hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have like a first class ticket and I don't know if my name were Gantholomew instead of Gant, I think I would have done well. <laughs> so i thought that. like this Aww. is a real fun someone way of looking at if, data someone said if your name was i know who this person is but they said if your name was jack you died so there you right. go <laughs> oh that's true yeah uh can you fit on a door is one of the questions they ask uh how many people per door do you need the whole door for yourself rose do you <laughs> so <laughs> no that should be one of your problems you know <laughs> solving the all problem. the different ways <laughs> i want jack to AI would have solved it no problem Right. <laughs> You're king of the world, my friend. Uh, so the I thought this was a fun problem. Like you have all the data points there and they're like, mm -hmm. how do you, given data, clean it up, organize it, find features in it and then identify whether or not you would have lived or died? That's like uh, I think chapter nine uh, mm -hmm. is like 
getting the data, figuring it out, building a model, and then and then kind of be able to ask that model questions and seeing how accurate it is. So that's really cool. Uh, I thought that was a fun problem. And it, it, like, it kind of like makes it more tangible, especially if you've seen the movie or you actually care about the Titanic, which I know a lot of people do. Um, here's one I loved. I've, I've made an algorithm <laughs> for finding pets' faces. I loved this so much. And then uh, the cool thing you kind of get from this is... Um, there's the idea of like actually drawing bounding boxes. So yeah. this is kind of new to a, a lot of JavaScript developers is this sort of like marking information that's yeah. kind of coming from this stuff. And I think that that's going to be a whole new world of cool stuff that's coming out. Uh, so like you get uh, these four coordinates and you can see these coordinate points down here, tell it uh, exactly in ratio of the image where the box goes for marking cute animal faces and stuff. And I don't know, man. I, I think it would be cool to, like, make, like, a a pet recognizer for, like, you know, you bring your dog to the, uh, you know, to wherever you're going on vacation, the pet yeah. spa. And it could be like, your dog's currently in the backyard. And it could, like, identify all that stuff. Like, AI could do that today. Um, it would be really my, fun. My phone always thinks my pug is a cat. <laughs> Because <laughs> my phone, if it, I have the camera on, it will like try to predict, like if it's a waterfall or the beach, and it will always predict my pug uh, is a cat. Exactly. Well, there you go. If you're afraid that AI is going to take over, just remember it can't tell the difference between a pug or a cat. I mean, we're to be safe. fair, the we're pug safe. Is... There's no terminators. Yeah, yeah. No Skynet. No Skynet. Thanks to the pugs. Right. <laughs> The, the last dogs. resistance. <laughs> um, uh, this is a cool one. And, and honestly, I could kind of show you this. They did it in a book. It's really easy. Um, but here's you can see right here. See this door that I have in my frame? When this door is closed, that means that like I'm working. And I don't know if a lot of people in remote work have this problem. But um, I, have, I have to sort of like mention, hey, this door is closed means I'm working. Door is open means I'm not working. Well, I was thinking like it'd be kind of cool to make an algorithm to find that out, and then I could have like a light turn on and off depending on whether or not I have my door open or closed. Right. Or I could have, uh, you know, I could hook it up to my Echo device, make a little uh, Amazon Echo uh, app, and then you could just anywhere in the house be like, "Hey, is Gant working?" You just check the webcam and kind of let you know. Oh yeah, he's at his computer and the door is closed. So yeah, That's awesome. just a fun idea. I thought I this could was use a that. fun project. You, and and <laughs> here's kids, the cool thing about this. My kids interrupt like every stream, so I could use that. <laughs> we could actually uh, we could actually build that in the show today if you want. It'll just sort of simple like this, because what's great about this one is um, it's extremely specific to your particular need. Um, yeah. And therefore, it can have a lot of bias and it can be very easy. So we could use um, a simple image collection system, um, use the online model maker with uh, with Google, and then we're set to go. So that would be a really cool thing. We can come back to that. Remind me of that. Yeah. Um, right. But that's that's in the book. What chapter is that going to be like six or something like that or seven? Uh, lots of fun stuff. So uh, other stuff that I think is really cool. Remember last time I was here, we, we drew uh, yeah. what Hogwarts house you're in. Um, I, I love the little surprise. I, I yes. don't even know you're not supposed to. <laughs> Never draw a skull. Don't draw a skull. I know some of you want to. Don't do it. I know y'all are. Um, let me see here. I'm actually going to find the chapter in the book for us in a second. But um, also, uh, did, I ever sh did I show y'all how this actually works with um, transfer learning so that you can move it over to Star Trek as well? Uh, yeah, I so I moved it over to Star Trek. It's pretty fun, yeah. And so if you click on um, boldly go inside the info, it brings you to a Star Trek version of the same thing. Um, and then, of course, what's really important, this is an age-old problem that needed to be solved, was um, is this a picture of a bunny or is it a picture of a sports car? Uh, that's that solved for <laughs> you. <laughs> um, and then, oh, this, this was really fun. Uh, one of the other things we have is... Um, are you familiar with artists, how they can, like, turn a six-sided die, like, they change the six side or the one side to build this, like, cool pixelated mm -hmm. montage of images? I always wanted I've to be that, that artistic. With, uh, what is with that? Rubik's that Cubes. Yeah. Yes. I've seen it with Rubik's I'm Cubes. not that artsy at all. <laughs> um, and so I kind of wish I were. So I just made AI <laughs> learn how to do that. And so in Chapter 12, you could tell an AI to, like, take an image 
and then turn it into the dice. And then here's a here's a picture of what I imagine it would be like. I bought enough shadow boxes for my picture there and put enough of them in there. And it was really fun because I actually did awesome. do this in real life. I made the, the TensorFlow.js logo out of oh, dice. Cool. Yeah, and, and it was a lot of fun. And that took me, I'm not even going to lie, that took me so long to do. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And I sent it off to um, Jason Mays, who's one of the editors of the books. And of the book, and he 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 was super awesome. He does the um, Made with TFJS uh, show, so he has it hanging in the background in every uh, Made with TFJS show that he does. So awesome. pretty cool stuff. Yeah, so all that's in there. Uh, lots of fun stuff, and it's it's been like a blast. Uh, kind of like writing it. And it's just like I love the fun examples. I love the fun stuff. And, mm-hmm. You know, like the code's not complicated, and we could take a look at some of that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but yeah, I guess I guess like I'll just kind of like take a step back and find out what what uh, what your thoughts are, and then we can we could dig into like either making uh, making our own models that can work right now, or we could uh, we could take a look at uh, sillier stuff because I also have made stuff after the book too. <laughs> I, I would probably and talking about how to write books. <laughs> I, I would probably lean towards silly stuff myself, but that's just me. <laughs> Yeah. Just, I may have to turn off the camera a couple times if it's too silly. Yeah. <laughs> Good word. Oh yeah, I forgot about the laugh after the <laughs> Christina. Uh, I'm good now. I'm composed. We're yeah. good. Giggles it's just it's one of those people. things when you start going, you can't stop. Same thing happens yeah. when I cry. If I cry, I keep going. I can't stop. It just it's how my my mind works. Oh, so. good. <laughs> well, yeah. At least you're not crying though. Yeah. Right. Well, I cry a little when I laugh because my tear ducts just like. <laughs> affect my uh, emotions and so like they're connected to my the emotions alligator tears yeah, yeah like i'm not maybe, sad oh but... yeah turtles have uh those tears too so like we get the turtle book going the old turtle <laughs> theme do, uh, is, is, animal, Ninja turtles. Turtles. is the animal crying we could do that yeah well that, that might be a little more is this animal crying or not yeah it, it, it what's what's great about this and kind of want to take a step back is christina like, sad or happy she's right she's happy but she's crying <laughs> We need you pull, people pull their phone out to check. <laughs> yeah. I, I, what I love about this is like um, there's just so much data now. Like I, I, it's not hard to come up with examples and fun stuff. And I, like once uh, we start seeing this more as devs, it starts going more into projects. Um, yeah. And and especially like any product, you can find a way to do AI to do something none of your competitors are doing. The problem that people are missing right now is the creativity to know what can be done and then yeah. and then being able to apply that difference. And so like you you taking a look at each of these different things um, and understanding where they are, then you can understand like what are the gaps? Like how far do I have to go in order to get this into my product, get this into my idea, add this to different things. And so um, I think that that's really exciting. And it, I want to say in about like three or four years, it's going to be super easy for people to come up with those ideas because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you hear Uber for squirrels or this or that. A lot of products mm-hmm. are just cross pollinated ideas that are already out there in industry standards. <laughs> um, and then when we get to that point, squirrels. it'll be too easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I haven't heard that one, but I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I pre-ordered your book, uh, I think, when you mentioned it originally. So I, mine should be arriving I, at some I've, point. But um, yes. yeah, oh yeah, high five. Sorry, um, <laughs> but I think one of the Left things I don't know. Yeah, I did. That's that's so bad. That's so bad. He's never coming back. Um, <laughs> I think what I can't remember if you mentioned this last time in the stream or maybe maybe when we were talking some other time. But I, I think one of the cool things about all this is it's a lot more approachable now and and there's yes. many languages like like your books on tensorflow js a lot of us are web developers so yeah. you know it right away it's already accessible to us it's not like you know some research scientist in an ivory tower building this stuff it's uh, right I, i've been waiting to say <laughs> ivory tower on the stream so <laughs> we could detect what kind of tower it is with ai yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go but like, let me Everything. let me show you an example. Let me just kind of show you an example, and I just want to make sure, like, mm-hmm. um, you know, people who write books, it's easy for them to say uh, this is easy, right? Yeah. Um, 
the truth is you've got to kind of show it. So I want to just kind of show you real quick. So in the, in the source code here, here's all the code from the book. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's in chapter two. I have, I have an example of like detecting the toxicity of the, um, of uh, some sentence, which like mm -hmm. immediately that's pretty cool. Like let's say that you're yeah. running a forum or an event or something like that. If someone's got some very toxic language, it should check there. So in I just saw that pop up on step, Twitter. Really? Someone mentioned this that they That's like awesome. put something that apparently was like a little bit like I can't even remember what they put, but they got this check that popped up before they, you know, sent out their tweet that was like, Hey, you sure you want to do this? This, you know, right. we're trying to teach people about their language and your language is a little harsh here or something like that. You know, yeah. it's had some kind of warning. Yeah. And it, and the truth is like you could say, Hell yeah. And it's a good thing, you know, if you yeah, say, oh, exactly. like, working with you is hell and it's like it's a bad thing. <laughs> the, the truth yeah. truth is the, the the language itself isn't what the problem is. It's it's the structure of these sentences and coding that yeah. mm -hmm. ugh, coding that would be hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the, the <laughs> truth is, like, it's very easy. So, no, you can bring in a library, say, mm -hmm. how toxic is a sentence? And it just gives you a score. And mm -hmm. that's how amazing some of this stuff is. So, like, in a toxicity example, you could check, like, how toxic a sentence is. And then you have uh, a lot of, for the visual things, I have the challenge for Chapter 2 is, uh, is this a truck? And then you see this alert box pops up. A truck is detected. And mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. Like, you're, you've are you got to be like, how, how much code actually comes into something like that? And it's infinitely small like this is a really i guess i could go to uh and inspect it i guess and maybe that'd be a one way of kind of doing this um take a look at it but the code is super simple what we're doing here oh, we is we're grabbing you. that image oh are you not able to see yeah well i see the truck but uh, i think you opened your dev tools maybe uh oh yeah you can't see dev tools no it's mm -mm. it's in a separate oh. code, I guess. No worries. Look, backups on backups, y'all. All right, <laughs> so good chapter two. Uh, simple, the chapter challenge. And then I'll go here to the index HTML. So look, here's that code for that site. Like, did you think that you could ever code, mm -hmm. is there a truck mm -hmm. in this image? Okay. Um, yeah. That's it. Right? This like, is like when I do simple. animations and people are like, how do you do that? And I show them the little bit of code that you need. And they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do this too. <laughs> exactly. And I think that that was a, like, like everybody needs that aha moment because otherwise there's this intangible moment there. And, and it's yeah. just so simple. Like, uh, you know, if, we're, if you're in JavaScript here, I'm bringing in uh, this library set up here. So I'm bringing in TensorFlow and bringing in the library. Okay. And then I'm saying um, load it up, and then mm -hmm. I, look at this code. I grab the image element, mm -hmm. and then I yep. throw it in there, and I say classify this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I go ahead and I check. Um, I look through all the classifications, and I look for the word truck, because this thing's able to see like fire trucks, dump trucks, 18-wheelers, uh, all kinds of different stuff. So I just went ahead and for each over what's going on here. And then if it sees a truck, boom, I just alert it. That's it. Okay. That's it's, it's amazing. It, it, like uh, it's ridiculous how well AI can see things. Like even the genus and species. You know, how many of you seen the app where it's like, is this mushroom safe to eat, or is this an herb or a weed? They have yeah. all these. I cool love the apps plant finder app. Yes. I like, have so many plants here that I'm just not familiar with, and I'm always like, what the. <laughs> yeah, and, and bringing that into a project is not hard as long as you've got. I mean, of course, I'm bringing in an efficient like detection system yeah. that's got a large class of stuff there. Uh, but in the book, we, you know, I show you how to adjust that to your need. You know, mm. if you're instead looking for broken circuits or what tool is this in the tool chest, you know, <laughs> it's a lot easier to go ahead and just adjust it to some stuff. So you're like, oh, what tool is this? Oh, okay. It's it's. This is what an Allen wrench looks like. Okay, I know what an Allen wrench looks like, but still, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you might need something like that. Um, but yeah, it, if if you thought like, hey, you were hiding a bunch of craziness, I'm not. That's how simple it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really cool. Because I'm thinking like you're talking about the toxic, you know, sentence and stuff. A tool I use like all the time is the Hemingway app. And that one will tell mm-hmm. you just like, yeah. what's the grade level of like, you, you know, right. you're writing. And I'm, I'm assuming it's the same kind of thing. It's like checking kind of like, how much do you have here? That's like, let's put this at a level. And so that's interesting to hear about the like, yes, checking yeah. for toxic stuff. So, yeah. 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 I, well, uh, it's cool. Yeah. And I guess, I guess the. <laughs> It's it's a great time to be in this kind of stuff because a, a lot of this has been yeah. dependent on gathering data, right? Like because yeah, like like even like five years ago there might have not as been as I, I don't know how long some of these models have existed, but like it just by having so much information out. I mean, there's obviously the good and the bad about collecting data, which is a whole other topic, but um, but just the fact that we have so much information to to go on that's that's also what mm-hmm. makes this work so well too now these days i imagine yes it does it, it's, it's such an important part of this is that um it's so easy to collect information how many of you are old enough to remember when you had to take a photo then you needed to use your scanner to get it to be digital yeah, like yeah. you took mm-hmm. a photo and then you got it developed and then you had to scan the images in like yep. been there been there now, I mean, if I type in, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, if I type in, you know, if I type in either of your names, I've got like tons of photos of you just on Google. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's so fun and interesting. <laughs> Don't Google me. No, there's nothing bad. You can Google me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there is someone that has my same name, which I don't think pops up anymore, but there's some uh, interesting pictures. I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> that's somebody else. Yeah, I don't know. What, <laughs> like, I get some weird image uh, tags as well. I'm like, who's tagging me in this? <laughs> I, my, my picture shows up, but there's also a professional Canadian golfer called Nick Taylor. So yeah. before, uh... he, before, he, before he came on the circuit, <laughs> I don't really follow golf but like before he showed up on the circuit i would show up more but now that he pro, so i guess i gotta go pro so uh, you gotta get yeah, there's a, bit, ju- man. a judge with my husband's name so if you google him at all it's just a, a judge that pops up it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> i i'm lucky in having the name gant it was like a curse for so many years people were like what uh, is your name I was, I was like i was like uh in high school i was like hey i'm gant and then, you know, they were like, she was like, uh, oh, sure, I'll dance. I was like, yes, that's what I said. That's how, that's how Gant got married. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> that's, uh, no, my, my whole move is just saying my name and having people like walk around like, he can't be saying that word. What is he saying? <laughs> so, so looking at the, yeah. these APIs, I, I, I like how intuitive mm-hmm. they are like everybody if if you've been doing javascript for a while if people are familiar with yeah. promises or async await so th- this is like yes. just really nice clean api and yeah. like you were saying this just i don't want to say trivial because to make things simple you got to put a lot of work in it to make something simple but mm-hmm. uh just like as a consumer of this this is like really elegant yeah, well, I'll say that and one of the things um, I'll do another example with y'all real quick and then uh, I'll say we could definitely take a look. I did write when you talk about book process as well. It's it's so it's so invigorating. Mm-hmm. But I did write this uh, this blog post. By the way, this this is our uh, shift.infinite.red blog posts. These are fantastic. We have one that Mark just released this morning. Uh, I have a remote work uh, starter kit edition. I love, love, love this stuff. John Major took this photo of uh, of his desk, which is really cool. It's like all the different things that you might need. Um, but yeah, I have a blog post. So if we get to it, I would love to go over it. But if we don't, and you're interested in writing a book, I have uh, writing a book, nine lessons. So um, yeah, it's that was fun to do. Like that part, um, the is daddy working thing that I did uh, with you know for my daughter and then for the family. I it's just so much fun, and it, it's like ridiculously easy to do these things I, i'll i'll show you that real quick let's go to teachable uh, machine with google okay so let me show you this so we're gonna say um get started and then we're gonna do an image project let's go ahead and do an image project i'm gonna tell it uh to access my webcam wonder okay. oh no 
the, oh, the famous you. webcam fight has happened. Let me see if I can go around it. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can. No. Evil yeah, webcam you. fights. <laughs> I could talk us through it. So I could give it access to my webcam. Okay. And then I could basically uh, tell it in here, um, take a picture of my screen the way it is. So let's say we're looking at me and I have my book in the screen, right? This is on my yeah. desk. So I put this in frame. I say like, here you go. And I move it around and it's taking photos. I'm getting different angles. I'm getting different sort of askew, sort of lighting problems, like different stuff like that. And then put it in the frame. Okay. Then I take it and I put it down. And then I'd say, I would like to create a second class, a different class. Uh, so this is a soft max activation where there's multiple classes. And then I just don't have a book in the frame. No book. And so I just take a photo of me, like, ah, I'm doing all this other stuff. And then let's say I take a third one with this gaming controller here. Okay. And so I hold down the, the ticket image button, and I'm moving this gaming controller around and set there. I tell it to train on that. Okay. And then what will happen is it'll, uh, you could be trying this right now. And then it trains uh, uh, off those images that we just took off your webcam. And what ends up happening with all that is then I could say, like, now, like, try the model. And what we could see is right there. Actually, let me see if I could get this. I'm going to turn off my camera here and let's try that exact example. This will mm -hmm. be fun if I can get it. So I'm turning off my camera. Okay. And let's see if I can actually stop the fight from happening. No fight. We're oh, there ah. we are. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> so it's I'm going to do this one with the book. Here we go. Ready? Oh, whoa. Ah, yeah. there you go. Boom. So now I make another class. So this is called a uh, book. This one's going to be called uh, Just Can. Just Can. Just Can. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, good. And then I'm going to add another class here, and we'll call this one uh, Game Controller. Everybody's watching this as we go here. So I'll hold the game controller up here. So I'll access webcam. And I'll hold and record. So you can see the game controllers and all these different frames. And look at the data I've got here. I've got about 100 images. OK? OK. So now I'm going to go ahead and tell it to train the model. And the trick here is that this has a ridiculous amount of bias because it's only seeing Gantt. It's only seeing this book. And it's only seeing um, this game controller, correct? Yeah, but in this situation, like, is my door open or closed? I don't have to worry about the bias because I am the bias, right? So, oh, here we go. Take a look here, because you can see it's a hundred percent just Gantt. Let me see if I mess it up. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, it's a hundred percent sure that I'm just Gantt. Now I'm going to bring the book into frame. Oh, look at that! Let's see if I can mess with it. So here we go. You can see they can detect the book. I haven't shown it the back of the book. Let's see how it does. Perfect. Does just fine. Because mathematically, detecting the book is very similar to just detecting the back of the book. So this is called generalization, mm -hmm. as the algorithm is generalized to see new data it's never seen before. Uh, this is why it works when it sees an image that I did not use in the training. And then last but not least, let's see the game controller come in. Ah, there we go. In a block mode. See if I can keep my face and it. No? Yeah, see? Look, it does a great job. So there we go. This is uh, this is kind of an instance. And uh, that's data. Okay. It trained right there. And then I could say export this model. And then I can make a website tomorrow that is um, immediately just uh, figuring out these these three things. Isn't that amazing? That, that is pretty wild. Yeah, every time you show these things off. Go ahead, Nick. I was going to say it's pretty wild that you just did that in a few minutes. like. Yeah. Come back yes, here. Go ahead, Christina. I'm back. No, just every time I see these, I think of some some. There's a couple of people on CodePin that I follow that that have done these, and they they combine them with like cool animations and stuff. And I'm like, I always, mm -hmm. I need to get in and do this stuff so I can combine it with my animations. <laughs> <laughs> not not something. Yeah. I ever oh well, yeah, with an animation, it'd be amazing. Well, I can tell you, here's here's a spectrum of where there's a problem. And, and Nick, I know you have something to add there, but um. Here's where there's a huge disconnect. It is specifically there aren't libraries. So so if you take a look at a lot of the stuff I'm doing here, I'm doing it in just pure JavaScript. 
Yeah. Um, if I wanted to drag this over and bring it into like a React project or a Vue project, there's no like library. There's no uh, React for AI projects out there. So okay. I found that like as I've done um, time warp scan, which we can hopefully take a look at, uh, not safe for work today, or anything like um, anything that accesses like these media, these like accessing webcams and cool stuff like that including the uh, the facial recognition one that we did uh, last time. Like, are people enjoying the story or not? No libraries are out there. So there's this huge, like, um, firewall between the amazing things that are happening and the amazing kind of, kind of stuff you could have out there. And I think, like, this middle area, when this each wire that gets connected, every wire that gets run between these two is yeah. where we're going to see like drastic increases of these things in sort of expectations. You'll say like, well, I expect this product to have this. I expect these things to have mm -hmm. that because you saw how easy that was. Um, and then you're like, okay, well, how do I get this into my project? Well, now there's not a component where you can easily do that. I explain everything on how to do this stuff at a, like a ground level, but mm -hmm. the, the drag and drop sort of stops there. And then you kind of need to have this deeper knowledge. But I think we're going to see libraries emerge. We're going to see cool things like that happen. And then we're going to see that once that stop gap is gone, uh, it'll be hard to kind of keep these things out of products. Like, why wouldn't you add yeah. something like that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like you said, it's something that's expected, you know, like. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about. My... I mean, sorry, go ahead, Christina. No, go for it. I was just thinking of expected things like my daughter today was touching our our TV screen. You know, she's a little four year old yeah. touching our TV screen. Like, why is this not like yeah. doing what the I phone does? Because she just have a project that. idea for a TV. <laughs> I have to run it past you in a second, but I have to hear Nick because I feel like I'm. Oh yeah, no worries. Over uh, uh, yeah, I'm curious about uh, Teachable Machine just because we're looking at it right now. So when you export the model. Yeah. What is it exporting mm -hmm. yep. exactly? Because like there's there's what you did here in the browser, and they have a UI to see it, test it. Um, but like if yeah. I were to like I know you said like there's no React component or whatever, but if I'm just going plain JavaScript and I I bridge it myself to be able to load it in React, what am I loading exactly? Am I loading an exterior library, external library, and then saying import this model? And like also is the model. Mm -hmm huge like in terms of serving up that model i'm uh, curious about those things yeah fantastic questions it's actually uh very small the the model is extremely small and it's a dot json file with dot bin files next to it okay. um so if we let's go ahead and actually say export the model here and let's see what's the download is the option and they give you some javascript here that you can throw in I'm not a big fan of this copy and paste JavaScript that they're giving you. I find that it's a little, um, it, it, it's it's a bit weird and opinionated. And they kind of bring in their own libraries and it's kind of a few things like that. This is them okay. saying like, hey, an effort was made. Sorry, Google, but you could do better on this part. And I think we definitely need to do more. But actually, the, the community should do this part. You should either contribute it through GitHub or you should um, you should build a library because I think that they've done more than enough here. So if I download this model, um, it's giving me a zip file. So let me go ahead and get this, get you the zip file. So you can see here, do, do, do. You've got a JSON file, it's 98 kilobytes and a bin file that's two megabytes. And this is what comes in. So um, you it's not will coming up on your screen, but oh, just so you no. know, because you point at things. I didn't want you to just keep pointing at. So... <laughs> Why? Why would they do this to me? Oh, it might have been right, when but... you shared screen that you shared. Like I if only you share, shared like, that browser or something. The, yeah, yeah, the browser. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, that is safer. Yeah. That is safer. You don't see yeah. all the crazy Nicholas Cage <laughs> yeah. and strange things that I have <laughs> on computer. But uh, so what happens there is you're looking at a two megabyte file. And that two megabyte file is amazing because like, here's what happens. Uh, that file is always that size for this project. Yeah. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but let's say I add 20,000 images here, <laughs> you know? What mm -hmm. happens is, um, so actually the fact that this is so small, I probably could have made a much 
smaller file. Like if you know what you're doing, you could have made a very, very, very small file and it would have been able to tell between these three categories that we're looking at here. But gotcha. for the ease of this, it shows something uh, that's kind of like this robust thing called a mobile net model. And mobile net has been proven to be very fast and effective on edge devices. So it's a perfect model for them to use all, all this stuff on. And it's okay. generally around a little bit around uh, two megabytes in size with a, a quantized model when it's all set. And so what ends up happening here is it doesn't matter how many images I add, it's all teaching this two megabyte model how to tell the difference between them. And the trick is uh, if you have too many classes or too much going on here, then what winds up happening is uh, the model's performance will start to degrade. But this model can detect with really excellent accuracy a hundred different things and be just fine. It's been trained with thousands and thousands and thousands of images on those hundred different things. So I'm not stressing it out with my three very similar and very weird, like actually very visually different things. Like I said, uh, the the model we had earlier could tell the difference between a dump truck and a fire truck. And, you know, like they're very visually similar and it can tell the difference between them. So these are very visually dissimilar. Uh, I'm going to get extremely high accuracy and it's going to be fine because I'm using one of the best models that's been made. Yeah, this, this yeah it's a great cool. question. So, yeah, the model's smaller than the data. Yeah, almost always. In this case, it's not. But almost always when you have a real production model, okay. you could have gigabytes of information and a two megabyte model. Huh. Yeah. And you were saying you can you can serve that on the edge. So then it's it's like it's just you know it, it's it's cash so folks can grab it wherever in their own it's close yeah. to wherever they are and so put it on a device see it in real time uh no round trips it's doing right then and there that's how you get it so fast and that's why this server like when we were doing the um i turned off the webcam so that y'all can see me on here but yeah. uh for for the webcam if it's it's not going to google and asking any of this stuff mm -hmm. we train the model it's sitting here inside my browser and that's it I, I think that's pretty awesome you know, thing that kind of blows my mind is it's not yeah. contacting Google or some massive like computers crunching stuff. It's, it's just not just, but you have obviously a, a JavaScript external package that's processing the model. Mm. Like that's it. Like that's kind of blowing my mind. Cause yeah. Offline ready, privacy focused. Like that's a wonderful feeling because um, you know, we would do a lot of mobile device apps at uh, Infinite Red. So one of the things that's kind of key is like sometimes it makes sense to go to the server and get something and things like that. But we always know when you're doing when you're thinking mobile first, sometimes it doesn't make sense to go to a server. You should be having something uh, staying local and, and has a way to can update. And that's what I really like about this process is that uh, um, the amount of edge processing that's going on with TF Lite, uh, TensorFlow JS, and just kind of getting these into everywhere, we're going to start having smaller and smaller devices that can do cool things. There's this one that I saw the other day um, with a Arduino Nano, okay, where you use the motion sensor and then you're training it on different motions that you make. So you can actually teach it how to. You remember? Uh, Go back to Harry Potter. I don't know why I always go back to Harry Potter. But you remember uh, the, the first book, when Wingardium Leviosa, Swish and Flick? Yeah, you yeah. know, like you have like a specific like one motion you have to do. If you wanted to, you could essentially teach a small device what's the difference between a swish and what's the difference between a flick and then fire off like real world magic wand stuff by having that thing like inside of a little wooden wand, and you go, da, and then, then they have that? your lights turn on or something. You, know, you probably, I think, yeah. I think but they have you can build like it, that. So. Yeah, yeah, that's. If, if, I, if someone's built it before, I'm not there, surprised. There's, there's, it's, it's something that's supposed to be codable for like people are going to code. I've oh. seen it because my kids, like, it's just like this little thing and you can get it and you can teach it like different. Yeah, it will do exactly that's like how what it you all just works, said. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and the trick is, if it if it was missing something, uh, you could teach it the new thing. Or like yeah. maybe I want to have it in my car, and it can alert me when somebody bumps my car and I'm not around it. 
or if I have my car shaking and I'm not around it, maybe I could hook it up with like a camera. You know, uh, sometimes people go around and pull door handles. I could use my car detection and my person detection. And if it's like after midnight and there's a person by my car, send me a text, turn on a light, do different things like that. Like the services that we're paying for that are coming up with these ideas aren't as good as us as coming up with these ideas right now. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and like you were saying before, yeah, too, I came up with an idea. <laughs> like j just the fact that all of this technology is so accessible you can literally like you were saying before make anything you want to like like your imagination is the barrier basically i mean maybe there are yeah. some some barriers but but like you can pretty much go go wild with ideas yeah yeah, yeah it, it's a, it's an amazing thing and honestly we're gonna see uh, the developer world's going to continue to see these things continuing to um flood around us and people will be thinking like oh i came up with this new idea it'll be just easy because they'll be gluing three ideas together now you know and in the next few years you're gonna just start saying like oh yeah i'm gonna take you know for instance i have um code completion inside vs code uh yeah. through through tab nine and the idea is like text completion has been a thing for a long time but now, uh, you know, like it takes the context of the situation and then identifies the correct next, you know, sentence for you in, in, in one category. Well, once we had that, it's like, well, why don't we do this with all this code? You know, like what would be this? Of course, they're going to use the variables from up here or this or that. And so I start typing code and then it's like, do you want to hit tab and basically complete this huge line that you were going to do here? Um, yeah. And it's so easy because words have, you know, um, rules, but even simpler code has types and rules, especially if you're like using TypeScript, it could tell yeah. what objects fit there are recommended and stuff like that. So um, it's just hooking up a different rule system to a bunch of data and then letting it come out with the answers. I was completely blown away this week, and it's not as technical as like Tab9, but our systems engineer and I have been going through and doing a documentation for something we're rolling out soon, and he tabbed <laughs> to completion on a path in the terminal, and I was like, what? I didn't know this existed. <laughs> it's like, why have I been a developer for this long? And I didn't know <laughs> you could tab to completion. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, things like that. I, I can't tell you how many times, you know what's one of the funniest places to see people really show off their skills is like when people live code during presentations at conferences. Yeah. Like I've seen people do stuff. I was like, how come I never thought that you could just move that entire thing yeah. right there yeah. that fast? Just like yeah. a command that they have. I was like, I'm adding that tomorrow <laughs> to be <laughs> yeah. able to like do that kind of live code thing. I love it. I love it a lot. But yeah. Um, so, so uh, do you have any kind of like questions or interest? I can go deeper into a um, couple places here. We can talk about how the models hooked up. I could show you what the code that they have here. We can talk about the book stuff. Um, I could show you a time warp scan if you want to see the thing. And then that's the thing I, I showed everybody at Magnolia. I think it's pretty awesome. And I haven't like officially started pushing time warp scan yet. So y'all are going to be one of the early ones. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I definitely time warp scan is is super fun. So I think it'd be great to show that. And uh, yeah. I think I think talking about the book process would be interesting too. Uh, I think yeah. I think the one thing. I mean, I'll I'll probably get to this once I once I get my copy of the book. But uh, I guess like if I just wanted to start off with just uh you know the shell of a TensorFlow project you know like forget react any mm -hmm. of that stuff and we just go plain javascript yeah. and we're like okay i've got i've got tensorflow imported you know what's what's the simplest uh, or, or like what's like the i guess the shell of what you would do to just kind of start get working with it uh, yeah exactly so um i guess the simplest thing you would do there is like take a model like this one yeah, and implement it into something like that. And I think we get around. Let me take a look around chapter. Uh, da da da. We'll go to here. I think around chapter three, we start introducing tensors. Um, chapter four, we start talking about how to actually like see images. And chapter five is like I think what would be the best one for that because five. 
I hand you that um, an AI that can solve the tic-tac-toe problem, right? Yeah. Like here's a tic-tac-toe answerer, right? You ask it a tic-tac-toe question, it tells you what move it wants to do. Okay. So you now have a model, and that's the trick, right? Because you know what? There's a there's tons of cool models out there, y'all. Like, yeah, we could do an entire show looking mm-hmm. at some of the stuff that I haven't built that yeah. other people have built that is just mind-blowing cool stuff. Stuff coming from Google, uh, Google Developer Experts, and all this other fun stuff, things outside of Google. Like the cool things that people have made I like showing the stuff that I've made because like I have all the rights to show it <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and I know yeah. everything it is to know about it. But <clears throat> there are um, like uh, lots of really cool stuff that people have made. And so if you find something, somebody, uh, let's say somebody makes a model that um, helps you see in the dark, because this is an mm-hmm. actual model that someone made. Um, you give it a dark picture and then it tries to basically like give you night vision it okay. picks up what pixels it can and infers the other between those to like basically give you night vision and you wow. could like hook it up to your phone and like kind of semi see mm-hmm. in the dark or stuff like that cool stuff like that. so let's say you have that model yeah well you have this file now your what your question is how do i hook this up to things mm-hmm. and by chapter five you start to actually do that and then what i do mm-hmm. is in chapter six we hook it up to your webcam in real time to like identify where things are and kind of do that stuff so that's halfway through the book that you get that uh, ability. Awesome. I do have one serious, super serious question for you yeah. from uh, Collab TV, Christopher, in the chat. Uh, they want to know, uh, how come Gant's hair curl is so glorious? What, what's your I, secret? I get this question all the time. <laughs> this is a part of the problem. So uh, okay. here's a fun thing. Growing up with the name Gant <laughs> and growing up with curly hair was really just... And being the only dude who liked uh, computers in New mm. Orleans, it was it was weird. And, and I actually went to college because I didn't know what to do. I was like, I guess I got to go to college now. And then a graduating class of two people in the University of New Orleans. No one likes computers here, stuff like that. And then it wasn't until, uh, you know, open source and the, the world kind of like being interconnected and talking to people like I'm talking to you right now. And I was mm-hmm. like, yes. Here's where my stuff is. So I, I've, I've been owning it. This is my pandemic uh, gray. I've been nice. dying this since I've been 24 years old. I the like pandemic the pandemic hit and I decided to stop dying it. So here it is. That's me. Awesome. And this is the result. This is the residual of curly hair. Wow. I had curly hair a bit more. And then now it's like. You're like wavy. a boy version of Rogue. It's pretty awesome. Uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> it's true. I got I have the nice skills. Nice X-Men drop. Nice X-Men drop. <laughs> yeah, well, Fox was bought so we could see the X Men start coming back into the MCU. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm excited. I can't wait. You know, what? <laughs> Wolverine agrees. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I have like a pile of comic books that I've been, I haven't tried to sell them yet because it's been the pandemic. But I, I like to make yeah. it. But now it's just like they're taking up space, and I'll I'll keep some, but. Um, Keep some, definitely okay. keep some. But just to just to play on on your hair for a sec here. I mean, we could. I don't think we'll have time today, but we could have a fun thing. I know uh, Christina wants to add animations. What if we did a like, is my hair curly or not, or something like that? Yes. And then wait, maybe we like superimpose like a a, an, a curly animation on mm-hmm. over the people with curly hair. I love that. Yes. So I'm just saying, yeah. but at some point in the future, we can do that. So, um, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Now, you've got to get all the data together for me. I want you to oh, be yeah, like yeah, yeah. A, a curly, curly hair. hair folder and a straight hair folder. And you just. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's what that's that's where I think the, the gap is for for the technology right now, like uh, building custom data sets for training stuff. Um, it that's a painful process. And I think that people are making it less painful. Uh, to to sort through all this data, you know. Now we know it's useful, but how do you, you know, if you want to get ten thousand images of people with curly hair and 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 ten thousand images of people with straight hair? Because it's easy enough to get it to work for just you and I, yeah. but if we want it to work on someone that's never seen before across the world, like it's a little bit more like you need a lot more data to make sure that it's generalizing well. 
And so I think that's where the, the gotcha is, like building the tools. Yeah, for sure. Um, yep. And what was I going to say? Uh, I don't know if this is a good segue to, I don't know what you want to move on to, but maybe do you want to maybe talk about Time Warp Scan now? And maybe maybe we could wrap up Hell the yeah. stream with talking about the book, maybe? Uh, sure. Process sure, 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 sure. Uh, let's talk about Time Warp Scan. So <clears throat> wrote the book. Uh, it has all the kinds of great things. And then um, I found it a great idea to the fact that this stuff's accessing the GPU and it's doing all this stuff quite quickly. I was like, ah, <clears throat> now we can do fun stuff with graphics, too. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically using all the graphic processing portion of uh, reading and porting data, I'm a big fan of uh, TikTok. And they have this one thing called the time warp scan where it oh, comes yeah. down and it locks a pixel in at a time. <laughs> I was like, I could use uh, GPU accelerated TensorFlow JS to do this quite easily. And I have mm. to say super kudos to two people at the team, uh, Kevin, who came out and started helping with it. And then right before I went to right before my presentation, I went to Disney mm -hmm. and then I came back and I was like brain dead. And I was like, oh, man, I got to get this thing working. And I pulled Jamin Holmgren in and he knocked out the bug in like in a time that made me feel bad about myself it was like he was like here this works and i was like oh i should have thought of that but it was perfect so uh went ahead and made this fun little gem uh time warp scan dot okay and oh look it can access the camera at the same time look Yay. at that nice. what's up skills okay. google couldn't do it but gantz app could <laughs> 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 so uh i did all the design myself i just said like what is the most 80s kind of like gradients i could use and i thought it was super fun and it worked out pretty I like well like the image that you see before you go in we didn't see yours, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just popped it up but yeah Let's yeah so there. here's a little time warp scan explainer uh that comes in there and if you if it's your first time you'll see this image as well <laughs> so what happens is uh this is this is a lot of fun for me uh, so we're we're reading the the data of the webcam in one line of code, and then mm -hmm. we just say like, hey, we're taking this sliver out, and then we're painting it over to a canvas. Then mm -hmm. we're reading the entire webcam again, and then doing it again. This is the kind of stuff that will make uh, your your Twitch stream pretty choppy. Uh, but it's easy because like so, this is just data, so I can reverse the data. <laughs> I reverse the data. I can remove the color from it. I could do all kinds of stuff. But if I'm going to scan downward here, if you just like I click this button, you see it scanning down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I can like I move. I'm just going to be like ah. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> hey, it's uh. Arr. Cyclops. Yeah, this is my album cover. <laughs> yes. This is it. This is, this is called crypto <laughs> for my homies. I don't know. But anyway, so I can hit clear here. And I said, this is just simple HTML5 in canvases and then using TensorFlow to access the GPU. I could change the direction from um, left to right. And then I could do some fun stuff. Let me just kind of get one more in here, I guess. Nick, you got to show yours that you can do with the helmet thing. You're good at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you share in a second? All right. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. All right, I have to try this. Okay, so sorry. All right. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm trying to give myself snake eye. Ha. Uh, no. All right, that's creepy. <laughs> Since, no. Uh, I have some fun stuff there. Uh, Nick, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Do you think you could do your helmet? Yeah, yeah, I should be able to do it. Uh, All right. Give me two seconds here. Okay. Close. Why did it ask me how the stream went? Uh, just like, it's weird. Uh, it's misleading because we are streaming, but streaming has nothing to do with Discord. I don't know. It's it's because you were sharing this. Yeah, words matter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Share here. There we go. Yes. Uh, Can't wait to see us. Okay. If everybody, if we get all choppy, it's my website's fault. Meh. Uh, <laughs> of course. I can't see my display. Lab TV says thanks for the nightmares they'll have tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's make this. Bigger. You can't even see. I will give you nightmares. Don't make me load this back up. I can give you some <laughs> creepy stuff. <laughs> All right, let me get Go in there. And, oh, please share, by the way, if, if you try and time warp scan me, share it on Twitter. 
Um, you could use the made with TFJS hashtag. It's hashtag made with TFJS. Um, and that way, everybody else in the TensorFlow community would be able to see it. It's pretty fun. OK, I'm going to switch right. to the other camera because it's it's using my. Oh, way. there you are. Yeah. Okay, hold on a sec here. I'm going to give a delay start just so I can get prepped. I can't remember when I when I did the helmet, if I I altered the scan breaks, I think I went to like. Eight. Probably not. You, you It'll be slow enough, I bet. OK, cool. All right, so let's do this. Record. All right, scan. Let's go. Attempt one. All right, well. Oh. I don't think we can see it. Can here you we see go. It? Here we go. Yeah, it's oh, going. Wait, there's... Oh yeah. Oh, no. I got part of it. <laughs> yeah, I made, a, I, I made myself cyclops. Let me try that one more time. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, hit hit clear so you can see yourself. I just want to bring my like dog into oh, there the you go. Here goes. Oh, 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 too fast. Oh, too fast. <laughs> too got, fast. I've got a I've got a badass goatee now. Here, hit clear at the bottom first. Yeah. Uh, and then they that way you could uh it's it's excellent UI. Is it there you go. Now you'll be able to watch yourself. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see it. So mm -hmm. come on, helmet. And so you said delay start. Oh, it's too fast. Oh. Yeah, you probably do <laughs> yeah. want to set the scan breaks. This is your yeah, computer yeah. is too powerful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want to slow it down. On, honestly, my, my productivity go. is going to like not exist after this stream because all I'm gonna be doing <laughs> is making helmets. <laughs> Oh, man. Here we go. Oh, here we go. And you can adjust the scan breaks as it's going if you want to speed or slow mm -hmm. it down. Okay. So I go once it passes. Now, but... Yeah, here you go. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Yep, yep. Oh. Oh. Ah, oh, too fast. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have, uh, I'll drop the link for the one I did at Magnolia. Okay. Do the oh, this yeah. looks good. Look at it. It looks. Fit. Now wait. Now that you've got it, while well, we've got it on your own screen, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, click I'm on the it. watch. We could watch the entire fiasco again if we have a video here. <laughs> Perfect. So you could hit play, and we could watch it forever in a loop of you <laughs> suffering <laughs> here. <laughs> it's super addictive. Like I was. Uh, yeah. I, I, I Almost. Like, oh, I was doing it. Yeah, I went oh. too fast there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you passed it up. Uh, okay, see. <laughs> and then you get this like elephant nose thing going on. So you get like I ears. Love it. <laughs> uh, so it's, much fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, and uh, the truth is, all this uh, GPU access that's happening here is specifically from. And there's a little. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> we we're still seeing your screen. Yeah, yeah, we're in yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wow. Nice. Hi, Twitter. <laughs> One of the cool things that's happening here is like that's that's essentially for uh, specifically to access that information and do all kinds of cool AI algorithms on it. But what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing it and drawing it to the frame for fun. Uh, just ridiculous number of uh, interesting things that you once you understand how this stuff accesses on the web. Um, you can use it for all kinds of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I found my helmet picture from the other day. I'm gonna drop that tweet in the chat. Um, yes, tweet it out. But okay. seriously, it's uh, I was like, it's so much fun just doing this. It's like because you get to you, do it without waste, having to have waste TikTok. your day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, but the hard part is I can't get anybody to share their stuff afterward. As they do it, they laugh oh, real will. hard. They're like, oh, I perfect. Will. perfect. I love it. <laughs> I'll add in my I'll dog. I'll bring a <laughs> child into this. <laughs> you should put a, yeah, somehow incorporate it so your dog becomes part of you or something. They're like you have like a dog. Like a oh, like head or something. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I like it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I have no shame. I, We're good. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to I, my, my goal is like, you know, hopefully we could see uh, definitely when you're sharing these things like it, it was meant to be fun. You know, it was meant to be interesting as well as uh, I think that the the world of AI is so inapproachable. We talked about this earlier. Um, yeah. Once you start going with ideas, that's it. You just can't stop. There's too many fun things for you to make. And yeah. I know that there are a lot of people watching this that can make stuff that's way more fun than what I made. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I have I an like... idea I want to do. I want to, yeah. I want to, 
I want to, I have a ton of succulents and I want to create like a little, you know, succulent identifier. Garden. But every time you, you put oh. one up and it identifies it, a little animation of the new succulent pops up. Uh, oh, that's <laughs> cool. So that would be a great. See, that would be an amazing <laughs> website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, nice. I, I, I think. The thing I really love about this, like, I mean, the Time Warp Scan site is super fun and it shows yeah. real applications. And I think, I think that's what's really cool about this. Like, as a developer, I can make all kinds of goofy stuff, like actually learning these things. Mm. And then when it comes to like a real project, not real project, but yeah. like a project at work where they're like, we actually need to use these things now, you, like all your goofiness yeah. you've been doing, it's real work that you can it's... apply. Exactly. In in uh, chapter three, we do a recommendation engine because uh, you haven't gotten the images or anything like that. So you've mm -hmm. loaded in TensorFlow and then you're like, all right, I have super fast math and matrix powers. What the hell can I do with super fast math and matrix powers? Well, you can recommend stuff like that. So we actually do a recommendation engine. And one of the fun things that I did um, for the recommendation engine in chapter three is I used my actually my coworkers, and I asked uh, four of my coworkers like what kind of music they like if they had to rank these bands, what would they like? Okay. And then I took one of our coworkers that I like to joke around with, and then I entered his scores in for him anyway. So Jed, <laughs> if you're watching in chapter three on page sixty six, uh, it recommends you should listen to more boy bands. Ah. <laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> there you go. Um. But on the yeah, Backstreet Boys, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, it's no longer May, so. Yeah. Oh, no, that's in sync. No. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, not Christine. Or Timberlake. <laughs> but it's a great meme. Oh man. Yeah. You grew up in that generation. You had to like one or the other. You weren't allowed to like both. It was a weird thing for teenage girls, <laughs> and I'm sure boys too. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I just listen to them all. I, I'm older, so I even mm. I, I even grew up with new kids on the block. So that's like yeah. Me too. I think my sister went to one of their concerts. For fun. yeah, look at you hanging tough like that. Y yeah, exactly. You know, well, you know, I take it step by step. So. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just love Nobody when it comes on. I'll start singing a song. That. <laughs> I start singing a song and my husband always looks at me and he's like, how do you know the lyrics to this? And I'm like, I was a teenage girl. And like, yeah, well, how do I not know the words to this? <laughs> you've got to meet our CEO of Infinite Red. He sings all the songs. He knows the lyrics to none of them. It is. If you Even like better. the song, it is torture. If you don't like the song, it's hilarious. So <laughs> he sings them on his tractor. Uh J oh yeah, well yeah, James. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got a lot going on. It's uh, we're a fun group of people. I really do enjoy. Uh, you, that that's a big part of what I think in like the tech community here is like you've got to enjoy what you do because computers yeah. are they they're amazingly interesting. But um, you know, at the end of the day, it's very cold. You've got to interact with people like this. You've got to go on these streams, and that's why I appreciate this human touch doing these streams, doing walkthrough Wednesdays, doing this part of it. Um, we are fundamentally, we need this part. Uh, and I think that the, like, that's a huge part of education. I was always a D student in the classes that were, um, like, you just got to memorize all the capitals. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I guess I'll be doing that the night before, you know, yeah. instead of paying attention for <laughs> the entire class. Um, but then you go to another class and it's like they can relate geometry to the world around you or something like that. And I was just like, this is amazing. I love it. And like you go home thinking about theorems, you know, it's it's about whether or not we care. My Latin teacher put everything to song. So those songs are still in my head. <laughs> and we, as we know, you're later. great at those songs. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, can you sing I Want It That Way in uh, Latin for us? Or, uh... <laughs> No, or, or pig Latin. Not gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna torture everyone with mm. my singing. Just my family. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, you could have just said some random Latin there. We would have believed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but touching on your point, no, something that, like uh, I, 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 um, I, I, our amisasis first to clinch in, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> There's so, my singing. Uh, oh, perfect. <laughs> but yeah, I want to. I want to touch yeah, on your point. Yeah, what you're saying about. Oh, you got a soundbite. I, I didn't have one with people clapping. 
Damn. Uh, Gotta get that on there. Oh, well, I close still, I still got to get the sound bites on my stream deck. It's like I've got yeah. like nine nine things lit up out of like a ton that are missing. So, but uh, <laughs> I, I only started setting up an hour ago. So, uh, <laughs> perfect. But yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, what you mentioned before about education, I remember this too. Like, uh, I was I was pretty decent in math and stuff, but like a lot of the times it was always like memorize, memorize, and I always asked like like how mm. would I use this, and they would just you know I would never get a answer. It would just be like memorize like. I have you need to memorize it. Yeah. What do you think you'll have the world's intelligence and calculator at the at your fingers all the time right. in the future? What do You're you think? You're never gonna, gonna have a calculator, yeah. Right. <laughs> what? Yeah, like yeah. I mean some some things hmm. you do need to memorize just because there's some things that you're just gonna constantly have to go back to. Like I mean, I don't remember yeah. how, but I remember like calculus memorizing all these derivatives, but like mm -hmm. You know, but the other stuff, like the actual, like, okay, yeah, I've figured out these problems, you know, but like, how can I solve this other problem that I've never seen before now? Or, or like, how else can I apply this? And that's, that's what always annoyed me about education. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's amazing teachers out there that don't do that. Um, so yeah. uh, I, I don't want to generalize anything, but uh, yeah, it, that's, that's why I, I just think this stuff is so cool that. I can make this super silly app and I actually learned something and yeah. I had fun, you know, like that's the best way to learn things, I think, yeah. you know? So. And, and teaching it too. Like that's a <laughs> building interesting things with people. So when we, like um, when I was doing a lot of, uh, we're consulting with people uh, when Redux first came out, um, I found one, you know, like when Redux first came out, it took everybody three days to understand Redux. It was just this ridiculous headache of a thing, but it was like the, the best thing out there at the time. So when I, was, when I was working with clients and then they would inevitably pair me with people to to do the teaching of like, you know, all right, we're, we're onboarding a new person. I need you to teach them Redux in this project. And the trick was one was making it fun. But at the same time, every single time I taught a new person about Redux, I got better at like understanding mm -hmm. yeah, deeper yeah. concepts inside of questions that they would ask. Yep. Each person would come at it from an angle that was like question, which made me better at explaining it and understanding it myself. Yeah. And so I think like, you know, we're talking about, you know, writing blog posts, writing books um, and teaching and doing things fun and, and in having groups like this where you explain stuff every every ship uh you know is raised in the tide there and we're, we're all smarter and better and able to explain ourselves just a little bit better yeah definitely no, for sure that's definitely the kind of approach i've gone with with like my courses mm -hmm. and things is that yeah yeah we're gonna have we're gonna do something fun and we're gonna learn and then we'll you know we'll try to apply that to something practical at the end but just like that yeah. fun thing just like you're saying nick i think that was one <laughs> of the the things that annoyed me the most as i got to an adult was realizing like the fun ways i could have learned these things like, yeah, like yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, watching people like the coding it. train on youtube <laughs> i'm like yeah i would have loved math if he was my teacher like, right like, <laughs> right yeah no, for sure why are we doing these 100%. things but yeah yeah um, <laughs> definitely i just want to do a time check we're at 225 i'm totally game for chatting still i don't know if you have a hard stop gant or if you can keep chatting for a bit or what but we'll wind it down you know i'm sure i don't like mm -hmm. people to have to sit around too much let's uh let's start winding it down yep sounds good okay okay cool well all that means is we'll have to have you back again so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, we'll have to find some we'll have to do the curly hair or not algorithm yeah yeah yeah, yep. yeah on it um i think we should cool, do cool. is it a backstreet boy or nsync song oh. algorithm <laughs> oh can you detect <laughs> i like that too i can i could detect yeah, yeah. them all i know <laughs> we'll see if I the know. computer could beat me <laughs> could, tie, could tie that in with the curly hair check because justin timberlake's had many haircuts so and Nick had straight hair from Backstreet Boys. We could just make them both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. You end up building this ridiculous, you know, like boy band API like service. Like you, oh, we have right. downloadable yeah, models for all your boy band needs. <laughs> Eventually, Spice Girls. I'll have to get into. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 1997 oh Spice, Spice Girls. Girls. <laughs> the movie. 
Oh my god, this is this is I watched happening. that movie. We should do this. We should make this API. I'm gonna go register uh boybandapi.com. I've seen that movie probably too many times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yep. I love All it. Right, man. Um yeah, so um so like we've been talking about all kinds of stuff and uh, this is a ton of stuff that's in your book. Uh, I'll, I'll get Christina yeah, to just yeah. drop the link to your book. Uh, I'm really looking forward yep. to checking out this because uh, I've, I haven't really done anything AI related myself aside from just seeing the cool demos and having fun with it. So I'm really stoked to actually try and have fun. Making yeah. Something super silly. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, Wait, if I went to Amazon right now and tried to get this on Kindle, would I be able to yep. get it right now? It's not in pre-order yes, anymore. Yes, you can get it right this I got second. a whole weekend to myself this weekend. I'm you like, are <laughs> set <laughs> and you know the author. So you can go, if you're like, hey, what do you I mean know. right here? I know, I know where he is. <laughs> instead, of ask, instead of ask Jeeves, you got ask Gant. So, uh... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't want that to come up when people Google my name, just like me in a butler outfit. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. All right. Well, uh, I just want to say honestly, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, it's always super fun right. hanging out with you. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. The, we dropped the the book link there. If folks want to check that out. Gant's Twitter, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, we'll hopefully I'll send you the link. Uh, writing a book: Nine Lessons. Uh, anybody yeah. who's interested in writing a book doesn't have to be about uh, <laughs> AI or anything like that. These are things I wish I could go back and tell myself when I first started doing the book is like, here's things that, uh, uh, especially if you, if you go through O'Reilly for it, um, okay. mm -hmm. be like, okay, this is, this is part of the process. And I, I, I feel like I, if, if there was a way to like teach a course on all the stuff that I learned, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but this it's very small application of stuff. So if you're that person and you've been mm -hmm. interested in possibly writing a book, please read that blog post. <laughs> You're one of the few people who can actually appreciate it. I think I think we think there's not a thing for that, but I get asked all the time like how it is to create a course for LinkedIn. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I should just write, like, I should just put yeah. something out there for people because everyone asks yeah. me the same thing. And I'm just like uh, telling them create this. Create a stuff. course course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Do exactly. Go inception on it. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Sure. Cool, cool. Love all it. right. Well, I think that's a, a good place to wrap up. Thanks again, Gant. And uh, we will see you all next week. And take care.